Welcome back. Uh, we're going to do this lecture. It's called European Exploration Causes and Consequences. Uh, we'll probably break this up into two or three uh, short lectures. And uh, these will be the final lectures of the semester. So let's start with context as usual. Um, <clears throat> the first big context is pretty obvious. It's globalization. Uh, as the Europeans set out uh, following Columbus, uh, they began to sort of bring the world together, uh, creating what today is obviously globalization. Uh, this will take centuries to, to bring about, but it begins here. A second context, remember in 1453 uh, that Constantinople falls to the Muslims, uh, it becomes Istanbul. At that point, trade with the East uh, begins to diminish because of the rise of the, uh, the Muslim middleman. Uh, which we talked about uh, a few lectures ago when we talked about Columbus. So there's this, um, uh, there's this religious aspect uh, to European exploration. Remember, remember that Columbus, is, uh, his, whole, his whole venture of sailing west to get to the Far East is based in part upon the, uh, the rise of these Islamic kingdoms, um, the Ottoman, the Mughal, and the Safavid, these Muslim middlemen. Uh, and another obvious context here is uh, one we've talked about over the course of the semester. East and West meeting and commingling, uh, trading languages and cultures and technology and faith. Uh, some significances. Uh, Neo-Europes or New Europes or Little Europes are, are going to be established all around the world. Uh, there's going to be a spread of Christianity and Western culture as European exploration uh, results in European settlement in North and South America, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and other places. Um, so Columbus has set in motion here um, forces that he has no grasp of. He has no notion of the consequences of uh, his discovery. Um, these explorers are sort of the vanguard of European culture taking disease with them, uh, which will make uh, uh, the conquering of these new territories much easier as European pathogens wipe out the indigenous people. Uh, they take, of course, Christianity with them, uh, domesticated plants and animals, uh, technology, and other things. And our final significance here, uh, European exploration is going to allow what Western civilization, our course, uh, to begin to merge uh, with world history uh, as Western civilization spreads around the world. Let's just do a brief recap of Columbus to get us in the, in the mood for this lecture. Um, we talked about Columbus's pitch, those things that he uh, uh, promised the, uh, the monarchs of Spain that he could access if they financed his project. Remember spices and gold and converts and uh, contact with the great Khan. Uh, we talked about Columbus's maps. Uh, we looked at a series of maps that uh, uh, were significant because they did not contain a Pacific Ocean or a Western Hemisphere, uh, thus allowing Columbus to believe that he could sell from Spain to China uh, quickly and safely. Um, we talked about the Columbian Exchange, that key breaking point in history. Uh, where East and West comes together, uh, where um, uh, Africa and, A uh, and Europe uh, are going to sort of collide with North and South America, mixing all these traditions and ideas and, and, uh, and foods and diseases and on and on and on. Um, of course, the Columbian Exchange is going to lead to colonization. It's going to lead to uh, the production of commodity crops and the necessity uh, for African slavery. Uh, remember also that those explorers who follow Columbus, uh, they know that there's a Western Hemisphere uh, and an emerging Pacific Ocean. Uh, they're not moving blindly uh, into the world, sort of as Columbus did. So I guess you could look at Columbus and say it's history's most uh, stunning accident uh, that in route to China, he, he bumps into uh, a new world, again, having no notion of this. He goes to his grave convinced that he had sailed along the outskirts of, uh, 
of the realm of the great Khan in East Asia. Remember also that Columbus, uh, part of his, uh, the purpose of his journey is to spread the faith. Um, I've read where he planted uh, crosses uh, along the coast of Cuba on arriving there in 1492. Now, when Columbus re, uh, goes back to Spain after that first journey, uh, he writes uh, an, a letter, sort of an official uh, recounting of his voyage uh, to one of the Spanish court officials. And this is a very optimistic letter talking about spices and gold and opportunities. And because the printing press had uh, been invented in the middle of the uh, 15th century, uh, copies of this letter are uh, made and it's rapidly disseminated. Uh, I heard one, his, one historian say that this letter is the founding document of uh, European exploration. Uh, news of Columbus's discovery spreads rapidly across Europe because of the printing press. Uh, the Pope will even issue a, a papal bull that grants Spain all the lands discovered by Columbus uh, for the spread of the Christian faith and for the discovery of gold. Uh, this will be tweaked uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, the Pope will issue uh, what's called the Treaty of Tordesillas, uh, dividing uh, these newfound lands between Spain and uh, Portugal. And of course, always remember that the indigenous peoples of these uh, newfound areas in the West are for the most part wiped out by European diseases. This uh, necessitates the uh, use of Africans as, uh, as slave labor. Let me mention a few factors here in uh, European expansion. Um, ancient maps are, are uncovered. I'm thinking of Ptolemy's map here, for, for instance, uh, that we talked about when we discussed Columbus's maps. Travel accounts um, are revealed. Uh, of course, Marco Polo that we talked about with Columbus. Uh, Sir John Mandeville, uh, you may remember that Mandeville's uh, travels are entirely fictitious. So whether these accounts, these travel accounts, whether they're genuine or fantastic, uh, they have an impact on European imagination. Uh, Prester John, I don't think we've discussed him in this class, uh, he's sort of a mythical Christian figure. Uh, he moves around from, from Central Asia to, uh, to Africa. Uh, he's viewed by European Christians as a potential ally against Islam. Uh, he is entirely fictitious. There is a, another factor here. There's an Italian merchant community in the Far East, um, uh, sort of a, a beacon, a, a lure for other European merchants. And, and of course, by the 15th century, we have better maps and compasses, uh, uh, astrolabes, uh, ways of na navigating over the ocean. And also remember, we talked about the Mongols and the establishment of this vast circuit of trade in Eurasia. Um, the memories of this, of this trade circuit uh, linger in the European mind. And then the final factor I'm going to mention here is uh, uh, the old crusading ideology. Uh, we talked about the crusades in this class. Uh, this notion of a, 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 an identity, a European identity based on Christendom is very powerful here. And this crusading ideology is a motivation to, to go to the Middle East, or, uh, to explore new lands. Now, what I want to do uh, for the rest of these uh, lectures on European exploration is to introduce you to three arguments uh, put forward by historians, well-known historians. Uh, I suppose we could spend uh, the rest of our time sort of going down a laundry list of European explorers, talk about where they went, uh, what they found uh, from Magellan to uh, Cortez and Pizarro and uh, Coronado and De Soto and Cabot and Cartier, and on and on and on. Uh, sort of a laundry list of European explorers. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, you can Google that on your own if you're interested in it. Uh, it's readily available. What I want to do is something a little more, uh, a little deeper and a little more interesting. And that is to talk about three, uh, three arguments made by uh, three historians. Albert, uh, Alfred Crosby, who wrote Ecological Imperialism, um, a very popular uh, historic work uh, Jared Diamond's book called Guns, Germs, and Steel. And then finally, Sapiens uh, by Yavo uh, Harari. Uh, each of these men make um, interesting arguments about European exploration, 
why it happened, what was established there, uh, why did the Europeans set sail instead of the people in the Americas or the people in uh, South Asia or the Chinese. Um, so we're going to take a look at these three arguments in our next lecture. Um, so we'll pick that up next time. Thank you. Thank you.